It's been a while since my last video. I've been away the last several months because my son has been very sick and has had to get many treatments at the local children's hospital. Later this year, he'll be getting a transplant and my wife and I are hoping to be his donors. Part of his treatment required him to be connected to this machine for 10 to 12 hours every night. During this time, he's not able to get up and walk around, but instead has to lay there until his treatment is done. I began looking for ways to help him be more comfortable when he woke up at night, and that's how I came across the idea of installing lights in his Switch controller. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I tore down a Switch Pro controller and installed these LED lights so my son could find it in the dark. Let's go. The first thing I need to do is tear down the controller and replace all the buttons. The original Switch Pro buttons are solid, so light won't pass through them. When searching for new buttons, I found this kit online by Extreme Rate that has everything I need, including the LED lights. I'm not sponsored in any way, but I'll have their kits linked below because they're fantastic. The first thing inside the box is this silicon board, which will presumably control the color of the lights. Next up are the warranty cards, as well as a very detailed instruction booklet. Also inside is a silicon button padding, as well as some additional screws. The Pro Controller doesn't use specialized screws, so they include a standard Phillips screwdriver, as well as these plastic tweezers. These plastic ones are great because metal ones can tear the ribbon cables. The last thing in the kit are the replacement buttons. To open the controller, I need to remove the two screws found on the bottom of the handles. I didn't even know these screws were there until I started this repair video. With the screws out, the handles will slide right off. There's a lot of screws in these switch controllers, so I recommend getting an anti-static mat like this that has compartments to keep track of everything especially one with a magnetic header. It can be very difficult later on if you don't track where all the screws go. I'll show you later in the video the system I use to keep track of mine. Next step is to remove the four silver screws that are holding down the battery plate. You can see that these screws are different than the ones we just took out, so make sure you're organizing them correctly. They were holding down the battery cover, so I'm going to remove that next. Next step is to remove the battery by pulling on this tab here. With the battery out, I'm now going to remove these five screws. I have the screws out and can open it, but be very careful as there's a ribbon cable that needs to be disconnected first. To disconnect it, I'll need to lift up on the black latch. Looking closer, you can see that the latch is pointing upwards, which means it's open and the ribbon cable can come out. Be careful not to twist the cable, but instead pull it straight back. With the cable out, the controller will split in half. Next, I need to take out the ribbon cable in the center of the controller. To remove it, I'll need to lift up on the latch, just like before. Again, be very careful not to twist or puncture the ribbon cable. With the ribbon cable detached, I now need to take off the shoulder buttons. There's four screws that I need to remove to do that. I mentioned earlier the importance of organizing your parts, so I'm gonna show you how I do mine. Every time I work on a new layer, I place it in one of these compartments like a new step. I start from the left and go top to bottom to organize all the parts. I also recommend taking a picture to know where the pieces go when you put it back together. Organizing makes everything much easier. I've taken off the shoulder buttons and now I need to remove the silicon board. On the back side you can see the location of the buttons when they press on the metal sensors. The buttons are protected by the silicon gel so I'll need to remove them. 
I like that the buttons had custom tabs on the side so you don't accidentally put them in the wrong spot. With the controller tore down, I can now put on the new buttons. The difference between these and the old ones is that the icons are clear so light can pass through. Next step is to put all the buttons back the same order that I took them apart. Line up the tabs and they'll slide right into place. Just like before, I need to put in these buffers to protect the metal sensors. Again, the difference between these ones and the old ones is that these are clear so light will pass through into the buttons. The next section will be the final teardown piece. We need to remove the shoulder buttons, then take out the ribbon cable. The L and R shoulder buttons are actually very easy to take out. Just bend them upwards and they come unclipped on the hinge. The Z, L and Z, R buttons are a little more difficult. Underneath is a metal rod that the buttons pivot on, which first needs to be removed. Grab your tweezers to pull on it and it slides right out. Lifting off the ZL button, you can see the two pivot joints that the rod slides through. With the hard buttons removed, I can now take off the protective silicone covers. They come out easy enough, but just make sure they're not caught on the plastic so you don't tear them. The next step is super fun, but not really, because it's terrible. We need to remove the fragile ribbon cable without tearing it. The ribbon cable is one solid piece that wraps around on both sides. I found the best way to take it out is to start on one corner, then carefully separate it from the glue. I removed the two shoulder buttons on the same side, then worked my way down to the other end. You can see the ribbon cable is almost a skeleton of where the shoulder buttons will go. Now that I have everything torn down, the next step is to put everything back together using the new parts. I'm going in the opposite order and we'll start with this ribbon cable. I have the shoulder buttons done now, so I can put on the faceplate. Here I realized I forgot to take off some of the black silicon padding, as well as the clear circle piece, so I'm going to do that now. When I put on the new motherboard, I made sure to open the latch by lifting it up. Also when you put on the motherboard, make sure the LED lights are to the side. Be careful with the wires because they can break very easily. Now I need to replace the joysticks. They need to be replaced because just like the buttons, they're solid so light can't pass through them. I found they were very easy to take off. All you had to do was pull forward and they come right out. Now I need to connect the top cover to the motherboard on the controller. After some trial and error, I found the easiest way was to link them up together on the bottom 
then slide the ribbon cable in. If you accidentally rip the ribbon cable, this kit does come with an extra one. Now I need to connect the LED lights, so I pull off the sticker and place it over the joystick base. With the LED panel on, I can now place on the joystick base. Align the cutout and it fits right into place. With the joystick set, all I need to do is put in the battery and screw everything down. And I'm going to do that right now. And that's a win. The lights look fantastic, so the next step is to put on the handles and I'll be all done. And now I have a Nintendo Switch Pro controller with LED lights. All the buttons feel like they're in place, so now I'm going to show you how to change the colors. Hit the L button, right D-pad, and Y for 10 seconds, and the lights will turn off. To turn it back on, I hit the L, right D-pad, and the Y button, then hold it down for 10 seconds. I found that I can also change the colors if I hold the L and Y button for 10 seconds, then it will start blinking and we'll go into this customization mode. I can go through each button section individually and change the color. Pretty cool. It took a second to figure out, but it ended up working really well. All the steps for install and light customization are all found in the instructions. And we're done here. The lights in the controller look fantastic, and it was a really great bonus that you could customize each section, which was something I didn't know when I purchased the kit. However, the one downside is you have to manually hold down the buttons for 10 seconds if you want to turn them on or off. This was a really fun project, and my son was very excited when I gave him the controller. I have many other electronic and repair videos, so check those out. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.